For now, he's safe. A few of the volunteers call him Whitey. Just five weeks old at the time, this rare albino crow was found abandoned. A guy in Cloverdale found it. And was brought to Monica's wildlife shelter. He'll take some food every now and then from you, but he, he likes to be himself. He, he wants to be a crow and look around and see what the other guys are doing and stuff. Soon, he'll have an appetite just like this. They are very intelligent, and their learning capacity is, is very good. You want some more? He learns by watching the other crows what they do and uh, what they eat. He's doing really well. He gets on with the uh, normal black crows well. Albino crows are rare, but several have been spotted throughout the Fraser Valley. I'd never seen a white crow before. And even in Metro Vancouver. When my wife came home from the gym one day, she saw a white bird sitting between the houses here. There was quite a bit of activity with other regular crows, basically. They were kind of diving around, and when we came out here, Occasionally, they would kind of dive bomb us, basically. So I wasn't sure whether they were attacking us, protecting the crow, or whatever. How often do you see a, an albino crow? And once I knew that was it, and uh, they said it was pretty rare. So I figured I better capture it for posterity. So I took a whole bunch of pictures of it. Left in the wild, they often die sooner than their ebony cousins. Weather-wise, they're sensitive to light because of their albinism. That can lead to blindness. Of course, their, their appearance out in the wild is so different that uh, predatory birds, raptors, uh, notice them more. But for now, Whitey has it pretty good. He's become somewhat of a reluctant celebrity here. He just does his own thing. Uh, if you go in there and he doesn't like you too close, he'll just move out of the way to the other side. He's just another crow. To himself, perhaps, but likely for the rest of us, he's something special. In Surrey, I'm Peter Kim for The Express.